mistake. Sorry, I should have included this at the end of the last video. They recommended saving this product so that uh, I assume that the next time the coherent and the sage will come back again. Um, I could be wrong. So I clicked over here on the main header in this section and went to file, save product, and then just added in the name coherent here after the statement and then clicked save. Um, I'm not sure if that was really what the tutorial was calling for, um, but that is what I did. And then the next step, and hopefully the last step, is the terrain correction. And you can see here in the tutorial, you're taking slant range images so you can see um, how your uh, sorry how your image might be affected by things like they talk about inherent geometric distortions such as foreshortening, layer over, and shadows. And they uh, get converted to a ground range image um, using the DEM. And so that's what we're going to do here. Okay, and so to do the terrain correction, you go radar, uh, you go down here to geometric, you go do terrain, terrain correction, and then range Doppler terrain correction. And it's pretty uh, basic, and we just need to make sure that we're using the right one. So I've already got done it on mine, so I'm going to go here. Mine is number three, and if you want to double check what the, the words are, so um, I'm applying it to the grid, uh, to the, I've forgotten what the word is, um, that's had the displacement conversion, and that we've added in the coherence. So you can see now it's going to do add in the TC, the terrain correction. If you go to processing parameters, it's going to apply it to all of these source bands. Go down and change the SRTM to one second auto. And you can see now from earlier we looked at the, uh, I've forgotten what the word is, the azimuth and the, hold on a sec, up here, um, the resolution, oh, it was the range direction and the azimuth and direction resolution. So it lists it here. And it's now being converted to pixel spacing of 14.07. I'll come back later and see if I can uh, play around with this and put a whole number without causing any major issues. But I didn't want to mess around with it now. And then make sure this is WGS84 if you want to put it into Google Earth. And then you click Run, and it should run fine. And then we land up with um, what I've got here for number four. I feel like maybe that's where I went wrong here with my screen list, because now I'm back to VH, the vertical horizontal. And I feel the first time I did it was VV, so I must have missed something along the way. But you can see here is my displacement image. And so if you want to um, black out areas where coherence is bad, you click on my coherence. So obviously my coherence is horrific <laughs> in these weird bands. So you, what you would do is right click on the displacement, go to properties, and then over here for valid pixel expression, type in coherence underscore vh or whatever your coherence is called here greater than they recommended 0 0.2 in the tutorial if i'm not out of the way you can see it blocks at the side here i don't know if it's worth playing around with it um, okay so i really just need to go and sort out this problem area um, but you can see i was starting to take out the low coherence areas and because it's not i'm not so sure about these blues um, yeah, something else I'm going to go fiddle around with. So that's how to um, get uh, blocking, so masking low coherence areas on this data. And it's data that's had the terrain correction applied. You also, now that you've got um, your plot, uh, sorry, your grid, you can look at profiles across it and so you use this profile tool over here you click on it and then click and hold your finger down and click to where else you want to go and then you go analyze profile plot and then these are some of the values um, that you've got going across the region i'm not actually sure how to change the second profile over here uh, yeah um, i will work on that so you can see um, 0 0.006 and 0 0.12. The tutorial does it and goes across regions with zero displacement and then these blue regions with large displacement to try and understand 
what level is the zero displacement is at because um, in their plot and let me draw zoom in here it's the zero displacement is actually around zero point minus zero point zero three and so they use that maths builder to or band maths to push it up so that um, the zero displacement is actually at zero on the plot but unfortunately I'm struggling a bit with mine to know where is the zero displacement and where isn't um, and so I'm going to have to work through that but this would be a very important thing to just make sure that your zero displacement is in the right area and so how you would do the maths is you would go displacement right click band maths and then um, you would uh, take off this virtual and go edit Sorry, let's say, so you're actually going to create a new band here and you'll say displacement VH underscore corrected and then you'll make sure there's a tick. Go to edit the expression, make sure you've got displacement and then add or subtract however much you want to shift it up or down. 